Welcome back to my writer's room, everyone. I am Matt Wallace, YouTube's resident angry writer, and thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to come hang out with me here in my lonely, angry little writerly sanctum. I always appreciate it. I really do. Me not being naked on the vlog is brought to you, as always, by our t-shirt of the day, which is today is my, uh, I'd flex, but I like this shirt, Hulk t-shirt, which is one of my top five all-time Hall of Fame t-shirts because I get a chuckle at it anytime I pass by a mirror and uh, catch myself. I find it hilarious, and I always will. Don't at me. It is January 15th, 2018. It is Monday. You've rebooted. You have a chance to do it better, faster, stronger than you did last week. Uh, Ham Shackle Pig, as you can see, is hiding under his desk from a literal nuclear fallout like any good child of the, uh, the 50s would because that'll help. Um, I drew this for a very specific reason. Many of you are probably already ahead of me, but uh, for those who aren't, trust me, we'll get to why I would draw such a horrible macabre uh, cartoon out of the lovable pig we've all come to know and adore. So, who got to contemplate the end of all things this weekend? I did. Uh, one of my favorite weekend activities, I know. I know. Um, so yeah, if you missed it, uh, Saturday morning... A uh, little quick backstory. So I guess uh, it was in November of last year, Hawaii reinstituted an old Second World War era, uh, like early warning policy for missile strikes and like early attacks because, you know, North Korea and uh, Moron as president who keeps egging them on with their, with their nuclear weapons. Um, so anyway, Saturday morning, everyone in Hawaii essentially uh, woke up to the blaring of their uh, smartphones and this uh, text message. Emergency alert! Ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. So that'll fuck up your cup of coffee. Am I right? Um, yeah, man, it was... So Saturday morning, uh, my eyes flutter open. I wake up groggily. Uh, I have no ability to wake up other than groggily. Um, I roll over and like a good, well-trained media consumer, I immediately reach for my phone to check my, uh, my alerts and the news and probably play some, uh, stupid, uh, collector game that I paid way too much money for. I don't do that, but I know many people do. And, uh, so I'm, I get into my Twitter and, uh, that's the first thing I see, man. I see somebody retweeting a screenshot of this, uh, missile warning from Hawaii and the fact that this is not a drill. And, you know, like I think most people who are trained, especially most people in I'm, most people in America, I want to qualify that. And we'll get to why I'm qualifying that a little later on. But most people in America trained to expect permanency, trained to believe that, you know, we're indestructible as a society. 99% of my brain, you know, reacting to that text message was like, well, that's obviously some kind of horrible mistake. You know, there are, there are, of course, no missiles heading for Hawaii. Nuclear war has not begun. Everything's chill. And everything will always be chill because that's what I've come to expect as a person. And my personal experience is reality. That's how all things are everywhere. And anybody who says otherwise is clearly mistaken. 99% of my brain uh, did that. Then there was the 1% of my brain that still thinks independently of all the crap that we're indoctrinated with every day. And that part of my brain had a very different experience of that moment. So there I lay, bare ass naked in bed, ice crusted, uh, my wife sleeping peacefully beside me, phone in my hand, I think the other hand was probably scratching my nether regions. And it was in that state and in that moment that for the first time in my life, I got to genuinely contemplate uh, the end of the world as we know it. I really did. I contemplated the fact that this was a real thing, that the nukes uh, were going to drop, and that either we had launched a first strike that nobody heard about, because if we did, it's entirely possible that our, our own government would do everything to keep it from us, and either North Korea was retaliating, or, you know, they'd, uh, they'd had a salty morning and just decided, fuck it, let's just get to the main event and launch the missiles. And I contemplated the meaning of that. Uh, and as particularly as someone who lives in Southern California, I feel like I live really close to Hawaii, even though geographically that's not true at all. But like, I felt like, well, surely if that's the case, then, you know, uh, LA, New York, all those, all those places, 
Although North Korea, I don't think can can reach New York with their missiles. But anyway, being on the West Coast, I was like, well, we're fucked. We're we're next, if not uh, if not sooner. And yeah, so that that was me laying in bed in that in that horribly awkward caveman state, thinking this could be the end. And the thing is, it absolutely could have been. Um, that's not a silly notion at all. If you want to get into the reality of it, if you really want to dig into the geopolitics and the practicality of it, of the situation we're in now that we're all afraid of with North Korea, it actually, there's very little if no benefit in Korea, North Korea launching a first strike on us. And odds are very good we will not attack them with nuclear weapons. Odds are very good, but, you know, very good is not uh, absolutely certain. If you'd asked me a year ago if anything that happens on a daily basis in the White House politically with America would be happening right now, I wouldn't have known what language you were speaking. I don't know what the hell to believe in anymore, so I think anything is possible. Um, but it's the thing is, that idea of permanency, that idea that America is this thing that can't end, is a horribly naive notion. Um, in terms of geo history, man, America has proven nothing in terms of permanency. We're a popcorn fart in terms of history. We are like a 12 year old, just, a, just assured of our own immortality who haven't learned that death is a real thing yet. That's where America is. Um, and it's like in its, uh, sociopolitical, um, evolution or puberty or whatever you want to call it. Uh, things can absolutely go tits up and end. They absolutely can. And and I don't feel like I was naive or in a panic state uh, to have that, to legitimately have that moment and think, what if it's on? What if it's going down right now? What if the nukes are dropping? And this is uh, and this is the turning point. This is the epoch. This is where everything finally goes south, as it absolutely could. Um, and yeah, that was, so that was my thought. And that's, that's the moment I got to live in for a good five minutes because I came in late and then, you know, I was able to, they, 38 minutes after that warning, they announced that it was a false alarm and confirmed it. It was all over social media. It was over. So I only got to live in that, in that moment for a good five minutes, but contemplating the end of everything for five minutes, that stretches time in a way that uh, I can't really explain unless you were you were someone else uh, having that experience um, on Saturday morning. So here's the here's the thing. Here's the really scary thing to me. And I'm only talking about my personal experience of this. Um, in that moment when I was contemplating the idea that nukes were literally falling and shit was on and that everything was about to either end or change irrevocably or both. Um, the really scary thing for me is that I didn't. I didn't freak out. I didn't panic. I didn't even really experience uh, fear in that moment. What came over me was a really eerie sense of calm. And I remember that. I remember just kind of being like taking that breath, and then being like, okay, and just kind of accepting that whatever was going to come was going to come. And and. And the idea, and the thing is, panic and fear and paranoia, those are, those are really harsh, terrible emotions, but they can also be extremely comforting. Um, it gives you something to cling to. It gives you something to do. Like, if you're panicking and you're shitting yourself, at least you're doing something. And, the, and your body kind of goes on an autopilot, and those emotions uh, take over and, and kind of drive the bus for a while. In the absence of that... You're just left with yourself, and that's never that's never easy for people, um, especially American people in a modern era. I've talked about that on vlogs before. Uh, we we fear the silence very much. We fear being alone with our own actual true thoughts and emotions. So not panicking, not being afraid, just being calm. That was a very scary proposition for me, because um, it actually I actually had to honestly face what I felt and what I was experiencing and what I thought about this potential thing happening. Um, and it's just, and it, it just seems unnatural. It seems like there should have been panic and there should have been hysteria. And I should have felt, you know, all of these really, I should have been pissed. I should have been like, you know, I'm getting dicked over. I'm getting cheated out of the lifespan that every goober before me got to have just by benefit of they lived in an era where uh, we didn't have, you know, a giant man-child taunting other giant man-children, all of them in control of nuclear weapons. Um, you know, I should have been pissed and, and really upset. 
But I wasn't. I just kind of rolled over. And I remember thinking, if this is, if this is, if it's happening, if it's on, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, there's, there's no recourse I can take. I don't have a bomb shelter. I don't have, you know, what am I going to do? I'm going to pack a bag and head for the fucking mountains, uh, you know, in face of a nuclear first strike and a shooting war. There's nothing I can do. Like I'm going, I'm going to be vaporized in my home, you know, uh, 99, 99% out of a hundred. So there's nothing I can do. This is it. This is the whole ball of wax. Me in this bed right here. This is where it ends and this is how it ends. There's nothing I can do. So I just remember rolling over and kind of, and watching my wife sleep and just sort of kind of making an unconscious decision, you know, in the span of time that I had to really take any kind of action is that I'm going to look at my wife, look at Nikki, who I love more than anything in the world and who I've been through so much with. And I'm just kind of like study the lines and you know all the things I like about her face and all the imperfections that she thinks are way worse than they are and I'm just going to take this in and I'm going to seal it in my mind and I'm going to and that's what I'm going to go into whatever is next with uh even if that's a total absence of anything you know there's nothing there that was the conscious or unconscious choice I made at that moment that was how I decided I'm going to I'm going to go out if it's on just looking at my wife's face and trying to and try to take it in in a way that we rarely allow ourselves time or silence or a moment to really do you know we're so fucking scurrying around all the time like to really take a moment and actually and actually observe reality as it is and that was the reality that I wanted to go out on and I feel good about that choice I feel good about that moment but still something is innately disturbing about how calm I was and how rational I was and how okay I was with with the idea that uh, it was all about to end, you know, and 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 it's just and I don't and I don't know if I resent that because I feel like somehow we've all been robbed of that uh, of that kind of uh, angry response to that of our of our like of our entitlement to a future or our entitlement to keep breathing almost like if we've almost if that's almost been taken from us by the current state of everything that's going on and by it's how portrayed and how urgently and um exaggeratedly and how just all how splashily it's displayed in the media and in our face 24 7 every day if that's like taken our basic entitlement to just go on um, which, you know, you could, you could make an argument for that, but I don't know. Uh, and again, this is just my experience. You may absolutely, if you, if you had that moment like I did, you may have responded with anger and panic and fear and hysteria and just downright pissed off. How dare you kind of entitlement to life? And if so, you know, congratulations. That's that, that is all, those are all perfectly valid emotions. I'm glad you were able to still, still, still experience that. I don't think one is better than the other. I honestly don't. Um, like I said, uh, that part of me feels good about, about how I reacted. And I like the choice that I made in that, in that moment that I thought when I, con when I contemplated, could this be my last moment? But another part of me is sad that I didn't, I didn't want to fight for it. You know, I feel like, I feel like I should have wanted to fight for it. And I didn't. And uh, so that's, and I don't, and I don't have any conclusion or, or any answer to that. That's just, those are the questions I'm left with uh, Monday morning after this weekend and after that really messed up, uh, very brief, but very deeply existential crisis when I allowed myself to genuinely consider the fact that nukes were falling and that the world was either about to end or irrevocably change or both. Um, and that's what I have to offer you uh, on this Monday morning vlog. The last thing I really want to say about all that is I, I made it very clear that um, I am an American having what I believe is a uniquely American experience with, with the stuff I'm describing. In many other parts of the world, people live in constant fear of annihilation. It's, it's a fact of life. They don't have the thing we do where we are certain tomorrow is coming, tomorrow is promised to us, and we will triumph uh, when tomorrow comes and get the absolute best of life. They don't have that. They're waiting for the next missile uh, to hit their house. You know, they've watched it hit their neighbor's house and their neighbor's neighbor's house. They're just waiting for the one that's going to fall on theirs if they even have a house to live in. Um, you know, and I, I have no context for that experience whatsoever. So I can't presume or imagine it or project onto it. What I find myself wondering this morning is it, people who have to, who are forced to live under those conditions 
many of which are enforced by us, by the way. We create those conditions. Go USA. Um, yeah, many people living in fear of American missiles all over the world because we're awesome. Uh, people who have to live under those conditions, do they, do they contemplate the idea that it's going to be the end for them, but like the rest of the world will keep going? Do they have that perception? And if so, is that any comfort at all to them? I guess I'm just asking, is it different to be afraid that you are going to die every day versus uh, being afraid that the entire world is going to end? Which is such a screwed up question to even be asking. But that's honestly something I was wondering about. And I also just wanted to acknowledge that this is all like deeply privileged shit that I get to think about sitting here uh, as an American. The way I get to process the fear of nuclear war is still an incredibly privileged thing compared to how m so many millions of people around the world have to live their daily lives. Many of them because of my government. And I just, I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, because I just didn't, I, it just felt, it's the truth, it's the fucking truth. And I always try to give you guys, and, uh, girls and non-binary people out there who watch me, the truth. That's, that's one of the few things I can offer you. So I just wanted to throw that out there as well. Sorry if I'm just completely ruining your morning, by the way, but this was a thing that happened and I had to talk about it. I had to talk about it. We will end there uh, this Monday morning, beginning of a new week, beginning of a new week of vlogs, beginning of a new week of life, uh, beginning of a new week that hopefully won't be cut short by nuclear weapons falling on us. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to talk about this stuff. You, can't, you need to. You really do. Repressing it and suppressing it, I don't think helps anything. You know, I only think it makes that fear and that panic and that perfectly reasonable hysteria, I only think it amplifies that and makes that fester. So I'm not sorry I, I talked about it even, uh, maybe I could have waited maybe till Tuesday. I could have eased you into it this week on the vlog. I could have done something a little softer for Monday and then maybe on Tuesday hit you with uh, the end of all things. But I'm not sorry I talked about it. I hope you're not sorry either. You know, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about, about all everything that I talked about today. Not just about Saturday, but about our fears of that of that climate and that eventuality and just of everything going on. If you need to express something, if it might make you feel a little better to talk about it, you want to ask a question, whatever, hit the comments and let me know. I'm here for you. This is what I do. This is all I do. Um, in the meantime, like, share, subscribe. I uh, hope you had a great weekend. I'll talk more about mine uh, maybe tomorrow or, or Wednesday. Uh, but until then, I am Matt Wallace. Kick the shit out of this week however you can, uh, and I will see you tomorrow.